This is crazy. Welcome to the Oasis. My name's Mike, and today I'm gonna to be testing out some haptic feedback kit from B Haptics. Now, I've been really excited about checking this out on the channel since I first met the team from B Haptics last year at Gamescom. And whilst at Gamescom, I got to try out their haptic feedback kit for the first time. And ever since, I've been looking forward to getting my hands on it here in the studio and sharing it with you guys and girls. Now, B Haptics are a Korean company that's goal is to add physical haptic feedback to VR and take immersion to the next level. Since I saw the team at Gamescom, they've been gearing up to sell these kits to developers and consumers, and you can pre-order them right now from their website. Although at the moment, if you're a consumer, you can only pre-order the haptic vest. The other components will be available for order in the near future. Now, full disclosure, B Haptics sent me this kit to review on the channel for free. However, I'll always give you my honest feedback and opinion. So in today's video, I'll be doing a quick unboxing of the vest, the facial interface and the forearm sleeves, and I'll be giving you all the specs, how to set it up, and I'll test it out with a variety of games and then finally give you my conclusion at the end of the video. I'll put timestamps to everything in the description down below. So without further ado, let's dive in. So let's start off with the unboxing. Here is the main box which contained the Tactop vest and Tactal facial interface. In the box I also got a Velcro Sorrento patch for the back of the vest as this is one of the first fully compatible games with the kit. In the box you also get the Tactop vest itself which features 40 ERM vibration motors and ERM stands for eccentric rotating mass. You get 20 at the front and 20 at the back. The vest has a sturdy zip at the front with adjustable Velcro straps at the back to accommodate different sizes. Here is the Tactile Facial Interface Kit which has Velcro on the back to attach to your headset. The Tactile Facial Interface features six ERM motors that run across the top of the interface. Also in the box came a USB-C cable, a micro USB cable, Velcro mounts, Bluetooth dongles and some setup guides. The Tactosi forearm sleeves came in their own individual boxes, which come with Vive tracker mounts and USB-C cables. The Tactosi forearm sleeves have six ERM motors in each sleeve. On each of these devices, the motors are connected to a control box, which features a rechargeable internal battery and a Bluetooth module for wirelessly connecting to your PC. Let's move on to the setup. Setup was an absolute breeze. All I had to do was download and install the B Haptics Player software. This software acts as a hub to connect all your devices to your PC and test them out. Once the B Haptics Player is installed, I turned on each device which automatically went into pairing mode. I then clicked on the device I wanted to pair in the software and it simply paired. The great thing is you only need to pair them once during the initial setup and then when you turn the devices on they'll auto connect in the future. If you wish to turn any of the devices off just push and hold the button until the lights go off. I charged all the devices overnight before trying them for the first time. B Haptic suggests four and a half hours to fully charge the vest which should last you over 12 hours of use. When using the tactile facial interface kit with an Oculus Rift, you'll need a VR cover interface, which features Velcro around the edge, so you can attach the tactile. Okay, so this is the B Haptics mobile application that I downloaded on my iPhone. And as you can see, I've got the vest and the forearm sensors on, and all I need to do is pair them up to the application, and then I can test it out using the app. So let's try that now. Okay, so it's found the sensors, and I just need to press pair, and it's pairing each one individually, and now they're all connected to the application. And now this is the fun part. I can test all the sensors by Moving my finger over the sensors on my iPhone, I can feel them rumbling across the front of the vest. And then I can move it to the back and then give myself a nice back massage <laughs> after a long day's work in VR. You can also uh, mo test each sensor individually and increase the intensity. And this is actually... <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, stop. Stop, 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 stop. 
Now it was time to have some fun and check out some games. First up, I tried games that had native support for B-Haptics and had implemented their SDK into their games. First up was Sunsun. This was a super weird experience that made me feel quite uncomfortable. However, it was one of the few games that had full B-Haptic support. Basically, you get poked by a demon Japanese schoolgirl and you can feel her touch on the vest depending on where she touches you. The funniest part of this experience was when she pats you on the head as you can feel it on your face. Next up was Furious Seas. Now I only felt feedback in the vest during this game. When you steered the ship you got a little bit of feedback, but then when you was getting shot by enemy cannons you would feel the rumble in the vest depending on which direction the fire was coming from. Pretty cool. Sorrento was the last native experience I tried and it was definitely the best implemented. The vest, forearms and facial interface kit all worked in this game. When firing weapons, you felt recall haptic feedback in the forearm sleeves. And when you got a shot in the head, you felt it right in your face. Depending on where you were getting attacked, you would feel hits from swords and bullets on your chest and back. It was a really cool experience. Next, I tried some games that weren't natively supported, but used an audio to haptic program that turned the audio from the game into haptic feedback. You could choose different profiles for use in rhythm games like Beat Saber for example, or first person shooters like Onward or Contractors. This worked with both forearms and the vest, but not the facial interface. First up of course is Beat Saber. Basically with Beat Saber all the notes and bass were turned into vibrations, and it was like standing next to a speaker at a concert with the vibrations just going crazy all over my body. It would have been much much better with native support. Finally, I got to try out Contractors, which is one of my favourite multiplayer games right now. And this was a great experience. Gunshots were really punchy, and receiving fire felt much more frantic. Although as this isn't implemented natively, the audio was just going all over the motors, and not directly where you were being hit. But that feeling of firing your gun and feeling the rumble in your chest was very immersive. So let's move on to my conclusion. Okay, so here's my conclusion so far. This kit is still in development right now, so things can change and be improved upon in the future. The facial interface and sleeves are only available for developers right now, although you can order the vest as a consumer for 499 US dollars. The other components can be ordered and added to your kit once they become available in the future. So it's kind of modular, you can buy it piece by piece and add to it over time, which I think is quite a cool idea. I think the sleeves and vest were absolutely fine, although I feel the tactile facial interface kit definitely needs some more work. Due to the thickness of the pad on the facial interface kit, it pushes the lenses of your headset away from your eyes, and therefore reduces your field of view in the headset. The motors that are on top of the facial interface kit, when they press on your head, become uncomfortable for long periods of use. Hopefully, B Haptics can improve this design by slimming it down and making it more comfortable for use in longer VR sessions. The Tactosi forearm sleeves worked well and were great for adding that feeling of gun recoil to a game. So if shooters are your bag, you'll definitely want to keep an eye on these in the future. The highlight of course was the vest. Being able to feel hits on different parts of your body in-game was a really cool and immersive experience. The motors in the vest did make a little bit of noise though, and when cranked up to the max can be heard over the game audio. This mainly occurred when using the audio to haptic software, and not so much in natively supported games where the rumble was more subdued. The vest and the sleeves both use USB-C for charging, however the facial interface kit uses micro USB. It would have been nice to have a standard across the range, although this is still in development like I said at the beginning, so hopefully this can change in the future. The whole kit was really easy to set up and simple to use. Once paired during the initial setup, all you need to do is start the software and turn on the devices and you're good to go. The internal battery in the vest should keep you going for up to 12 hours. The games that had native support were the best, of course, with Sorrento being the highlight, and being shot in the head during that game just felt so incredible, it really added to the experience. The audio to haptic program is a nice stopgap if your favourite game isn't natively supported, however when using this feature you do get rumble with background noise, so the vest is just constantly rumbling. You really want it to only rumble when something's happening in-game. 
And this is how I would imagine it feels using a sub pack or a, a would you vest as both run off audio from the game and not through uh, being tied through an SDK. And although sadly I haven't tried either of those vests for a direct comparison, both the Woodja and Subback feature tactile transducers on your back. So although it might be a punchier feedback, you won't get that precise feedback across your whole body like you can with the B Haptics vest. This B-Haptics kit supports all PC-based VR headsets and platforms, and I'd love to see this working with the Oculus Go, Oculus Quest, and other wireless standalone headsets in the future. I think that would be awesome. I think aesthetically, the vest looks pretty cool as well. It gives you an instant six-pack without having to do any work, and it feels sturdy in its design. It has a removable fabric inside that you can clean, so if you like to get hot and sweaty in VR, you don't need to worry about ruining the vest. So right now I would say it's a lot of fun to use this kit, but my advice to those out there that are interested in this will be to wait until your favourite games are natively supported. I really hope we get support from games like Onward, Pavlov and Contractors, as I feel the dedicated player base in those games would really enjoy a product like this. This could also be great for social experiences like VR chat and alt space. B Haptics is one of the first to market with this kind of product, as the Tesla suit isn't going to be available for some time yet, and their competitor Hardlight VR recently closed down due to lack of funding. I'll be continuing to test this kit out on various games in the future, and I'll definitely keep you all updated. If you're a developer and want to add B Haptic support to your game, head over to their website and sign up now. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. If you have any questions about any of the B Haptics kit I've featured in this video, put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Also, let me know what you think of the B Haptics kit in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Leave a like if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Yeah.